to show you a reliable method for sharpening your V-tool. The V-tool is one of the most common uh, uh, tools that carvers use, but it does cause people problems in the sharpening. And I've got a step-by-step -step method to show you. But before I do, let's talk a little bit about V-tools in general. Then I want to uh, look at some different terms so that we all agree on what, what I'm calling things. Then some V-tools that actually are really difficult to sharpen or impossible to sharpen that you need to check that your V-tool isn't like that. And then finally we'll get into the step-by-step -step, uh, method of sharpening. So, first of all, let's have a look at some V-tools here. As you can see, they come in all sorts of different sizes. Very large, down to very small. But the method of sharpening them is going to be all the same. The 60 degrees are commonest V-tool. These are straight 60 degrees in a variety of widths. Uh, and this is the one we're going to use for our um, model today. This one here is a, um, a tighter V-tool. That's a 45 degree V-tool. Same method, slightly trickier to get inside. And then this one is a 90 degree V-tool, uh, much more open. And of all these V-tools, it's the 60 degrees that is actually the most useful. They also come in a bent form like this, and again, um, the sharpening is the same, except that you need to make it a little bit round, more rounded here, in this uh, plane on the keel. Okay, so those are the those are basic V-tools. I'm sure you all have a V-tool. If not, you really need to get one because it's very useful. Let's go on and have a look at uh, some of the terms I'm going to use. Let's have a close look at this V-tool. The best way to think of it is as two chisels joined together at a centre. So we have a chisel here, a chisel here, and then it's joined together in the middle here. So there are three of everything. There's a cutting edge for one chisel, there's a cutting edge for the other chisel, and then there's the apex, the little angle cutting edge here. All these need to be sharpened. There's also three bevels. There's a bevel here for one chisel, there's a bevel here for the other chisel on the other side, and then this middle bevel where the two join together. And this bevel is called a keel. And it's really important because the keel is the point at which the tool rests on the wood when you're carving. And notice that it's often longer than the, uh, the chisel bevels because there's a certain thickness of metal between the inside here and the outside. So between the root in the, uh, in the angle and the outside here there's a thickness and that thickness means that the, you have to sort of shape this bevel a little bit back here at times. Very common to see that. So three cutting edges, three bevels and three heels. One here for this chisel. The, uh, the chisel on the other side has a uh, heel here. And then finally we've got this little point there, which is the, uh, the heel for this keel, this middle section. So that's the way to think of it, and we can see that in action very much when we sharpen. We'll be taking these three parts separately, one bevel, another bevel, and the bevel in the middle to sharpen. Before we get on to the sharpening, it's important to check your V-tool. Some V-tools are very difficult, if not impossible, to uh, sharpen. So first of all, as a, just a general principle, make sure your V-tool is lined up like this, along the axis of the tool, that each wall is symmetrical, even thickness, and that the, the V-groove itself is lined up, it's not off to one side. So you have a nice symmetrical carving tool. But in addition to this, there are three problems that I want to highlight that you need to check. They cause issues, cause a lot of problems, and we need to be able to deal with them. The first one is regarding this distance of metal, this thickness of metal between the inside here, the root of the, uh, of the two join, joins together, and the outside here, which gives rise to the keel. If you look at this photo, here's a picture of a, a tool with a very thin amount of uh, metal. It's a pretty devastating uh, photograph, isn't it? Really awful to look at. And the reason that this bit of metal snapped off is because there is no thickness here. This, from the inside where the apex is to the outside there, 
uh, very little metal, no keel, it sort of merges into the blade, no strength. So as this goes into the wood, these two walls, the bevels on each chisel, closes the V. It, the pressure is into the centre, so you can get this terrible uh, effect if you're not careful. So if you've got one of these tools that has a very thin uh, bit of metal here, then you've got to proceed very carefully. You, you can use it, you can carry on, but really um, you can't bury the tool deep into any sort of hardwood or you might get this sort of effect. Let's have a look at another photograph. This is the second problem you might get. Look at this V-tool. This is the end view of a V-tool. Look at the inside wall. This inside wall is nice and flat. This wall has a belly on it and a thin part here. So as we sharpen the bevel on this side, it's going to cut into here. It's going to remove metal here. So you'll end up with a notch in this blade continually. But to get this whole edge sharpened, you will always get a notch in there, which gives you a weak apex. So check your V-tool that you have a, a very flat, very even inside face. That's really, really important to successful sharpening. If you've got a bevel uh, belly like this, then you need to either throw the tool away and get another one, or you've got to flatten this bevel with slip stones first, this inside belly with slip stones first. So this is a really bad fault. The third problem lies in the shape of the keel itself. The keel should be parallel and narrow like this here. But some of you will have tools in which the keel is more of a conical shape. And the problem with that is that the cutting edge is such, is actually coming a uh, very tight little angle here, but it's followed by a cone of metal in the cut, and that lifts the cutting edge out. So you continually are having to force the tool down into the wood. So this is a very hard work tool. The, what you need to do here is actually remove some of the metal, like I've got done here. Remove all this metal, flatten that cone, but keep the narrow keel. By taking metal off there and drawing, drawing the bevels back here, you can remove this fat cone of metal here, which causes the problem. So if you have a tool like that, and you change it by removing some of the metal, like so, you'll find it'll uh, work much better, be much easier to push into the wood. Here's the equipment I'm going to use for sharpening that you've seen in this series. I'm going to sharpen by hand essentially because it's a slow, methodical way and that'll show you exactly what you need to do. And I suggest you do that, sharpen by hand, in this way first. And then if you've got some power equipment that you can bring in and speed the whole process up, well, fine. But I think this is a good way to start. So, I'm going to use a grinding wheel uh, to begin with uh, to remove a lot of the metal. Uh, you, this is a, a, a power wheel, a very simple grinder. You need some water to uh, uh, cool the blade. A uh, water-based uh, grinding wheel is uh, just as good. If you don't have a grinding wheel, then we can use a coarse stone like this. Uh, this we'll be using. This is a coarse bench stone. Can't ruin them. And then for finishing, uh, after I remove most of the uh, uh, metal, I'm going to use a, an Arkansas stone, which is a very fine um, finishing stone. You'll also need some slip stones that are shaped to the inside, so an angle uh, of 60 degrees or so, slightly less, uh, either a large one like this or, or small ones like that, just for removing a burr off the inside edge. Then we'll need oil for the uh, oil stones, the slip stones and the bench stone, and then finally we'll finish off and maintain the tool with a strop like this. So this is a bench strop and a shaped inside strop. Uh, that'll fit the inside of the V-tool, and both have an abrasive on the surface. And then lastly, of course, you'll need a cup of tea, and uh, that's really important. So assemble your things, and we'll move on to the sharpening problem.